you're not alone. If you need someone to talk to today, please contact Crisis Services Canada by either calling them at 1-833-456-4566 all hours of the day, or you can text them at 45645 at 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, you're not alone and Crisis Services Canada is here to help. Welcome to this January 5th, 2021 edition of Coffee with Graham on Amateur Sports TV. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth. Today's episode is brought to you by Pure Anata, Fabricland Winkler, and Toby Hockey. Excited to be back today. I'm going to be joined by Bailey Kerwin, number 16 of the Swift Current Wildcats. Bailey's in her fourth year with the team this year. She's originally from Gold Lake, Saskatchewan. I'm gonna have a chance to ask her about what it was like living there and then eventually moving to Swift Current to continue playing her hockey career. We're also going to talk about some of the tournaments she's played in as well and the commitment to Robert Morris University that she made last year for the season of next year this fall coming up in 2021 where she will pursue her career in hockey at that next level so sit back relax enjoy the show i got a new mug for christmas by the way excited to rock it today on this first edition of coffee with graham in 2021 january 5th here on astv Joining me now is senior forward assistant captain of this year's Swift Current Wildcats team in the Saskatchewan Female Midget Triple A Hockey League, Bailey Kerwin. Bailey joins me from, I'm guessing from her house, wherever she's at right now. Hopefully, Bailey, you've stayed safe during this holiday season. Hopefully, keeping that social distance during the holidays, as well as having a great Christmas as well. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for joining me on the first edition of Coffee with Graham here in 2021. I'm doing pretty good. Thanks. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. It's going to be exciting to get into some hockey, get into just where you've played in your career up until this point and just the university commitment as well. But I do got to ask you, even though Christmas was about, I don't know how many days now ago it was, but I mean, I, I'm sure you had a wonderful Christmas. Hopefully you got a, some, some presents you got on your, you asked for on your wish list, but did you, Enjoy your Christmas this year with all the all the changes to the holiday this season. Yeah, my sister, who's actually down in the States, got to come home. So after her two-week quarantine, we got a little bit, like a week or so with her. And uh, I live on a farm, so our family was able to just skate outside. And it was kind of a normal Christmas for us because we don't go anywhere anyways because my sisters are playing hockey, so it's just our time to come home and be together awesome so you got to see the family you got to see your i mean one of your sisters just your family in general and you got to skate on the pond as well that's awesome is there anything in particular that you got on your wish list that you're pretty excited to open the the day of christmas morning um uh i got a weighted blanket (laughs) which isn't too (laughs) exciting but i love it so far and I don't know how I'm going to sleep without it anymore. That's awesome, man. I mean, you always got to be comfortable when you're sleeping, always get that good night rest. I know that I got, uh, I was pretty blessed this Christmas. I got a set of AirPods, which was very unexpected. I'm actually wearing them now. That's why you guys aren't seeing me with uh, the mic in this episode. We're trying out something a bit different. Of course, I got this coffee mug from my, uh, my girlfriend's mother, which was probably one of my favorite gifts to be honest but we're, we're going to move away from the christmas stuff and we're going to talk about your university commitment i mean you, you signed with well you committed sorry to robert morris university for the fall of 2021 so you'll be uh robert morris university colonial come 2021 how excited are you just hearing about that that you'll be playing in a robert morris university jersey come the the fall this season uh, I'm super excited, especially with all this like COVID stuff. It's definitely something to look forward to, and hopefully it doesn't get ruined or 
affected too much by next year, but uh, it was an easy decision almost, and I'm glad I made it when I did. Yeah, and you made it last year, and you, you made it a, a year early than you could have, but why did you decide to make that commitment last year and making that announcement last year? Um, well, last year, after the Mandy, or kind of during the Mandy Sports Tournament, I flew down to Pittsburgh and saw a tour. And honestly, dealing with scouts and emailing them isn't the easiest thing to have on your plate. And it just felt like the right fit for me and it clicked and just thought it was the right choice. And this way it was, I knew what I was doing and I can start to figure out other stuff in my life. Yeah, and I read an article by uh, Swift Current Online. They did it on you when you announced the, the sign-in. They, they did a piece on you, and or, or the commitment, sorry. But you said in that piece that you actually had a chance to fly down to Pittsburgh to see the school, and just being able to really get a an in-person look at it. How is that like? And just knowing that this for you was the right place to continue your playing career into the foreseeable future? Uh, well, I, yeah, I had a very short trip, got on the plane at like 6 a.m. and had been playing the night before, so didn't get to bed till two. It was a long day, and then we watched one of their games, actually. I got to watch them play Mercyhurst, which is like a rival, and like they're kind of the top two. So it was a really good game. It was a long day, not gonna lie, but the coaches, were very welcoming. They made everything easy. Everything was straightforward to the point. Um, the next day we kind of toured campus, I would say, and it was small and like gated. And I guess like that's kind of coming from a small town. That was definitely something that like felt more like home, which made it more comfortable. But I'm lucky that I was able to actually fly down and see the school because I know lots of girls they're on virtual tours or like doing Zoom meetings and I just, it's just not the same. So I'm definitely taking advantage of that. And you said you had a chance to actually see the team play a game against a rival like Mercyhurst. Just being able to be there, take that in, see what the kind of hockey that they play at the university level and just seeing the team that you're going to be playing for for the next Few, year, few years here when you eventually make that jump to playing for Robert Morris. Just what impressed you about the the game of university hockey at the Division I level and just the the experience of watching this team play a rival like Mercyhurst? Um, it was definitely a lot faster, quicker, quicker decision. And my old, my sisters have played university hockey, so I've seen some of it. So it's not like I've never seen it before. I've watched it and kind of gotten a feeling through them. But watching it and knowing that I'm going to be a part of the team was just like really cool to take in. And there was a girl from Sask who I'd actually played against. So kind of seeing where she fit in was like kind of comforting too to watch almost. Yeah, I bet. And you spoke about how your sisters have gone through playing at the university level. Of course, Taylor and Kayla Kerwin both being able to continue playing at that next level to playing at the university level. But just going back to the decision that you had to make, and there there were a number of schools that were were out there that you kind of had a decision to make where to go to and one of those schools was the University of Saskatchewan and you would have played in the same place that your sister Kayla played in which would have been pretty cool if you decided to go there and you would have been able to reunite with a teammate that you played for for the last four seasons prior to this season and Sarah Kendall but why exactly did you choose to you know, make that move eventually to going to Pennsylvania instead of staying closer to home? Well, I've always been pretty independent and I have never been homesick going to Swift. I know it's not far, but um, I just know coming from a small town, you see people who grow up and they just don't ever leave. 
And I knew I always wanted to come back to Saskatchewan. And I just thought this would be a good opportunity to go out and experience something different other than Saskatchewan and then be able to come home later when I'm done my schooling. And you spoke about it in the piece with Swift Current Online, how it's hard to kind of stay in the present and basically saying it's hard to stay in the present at times and not being, you know, tempted to look into the future because when you made the commitment, you were in your third season with the team, you're playing in your fourth season now. So at the time you knew you still had a full season coming which has been played this year. Obviously, you guys haven't been able to get back on the ice. How have you felt the adjustment has been really just trying to stay into that mindset of staying in the present? It's not as easy as it looks, I'm assuming. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know. It's pretty hard. It's pretty easy to get down on yourself. I know it's like there's no games to look forward every weekend and like um, – but I've taken this opportunity. I've been doing like skills, right? You can only have eight people on the ice. So it's like different types of practices and it's um, definitely making me better in different ways that I wouldn't actually have the opportunity to focus on as much. Uh, schooling has been a lot different also. So off the ice, it's been every other day. So like being able to time management like myself and like I definitely spend a lot more time at the gym mostly to avoid homework but um I don't know I think that's part of learning almost for university because there's no one to like tell you what to do and you just gotta get yourself on a schedule and I think that's going to be almost helpful going into next year and you're gonna have a chance to play alongside familiar faces and you're gonna have a chance to play alongside players that you've played against in this league and Ryan Parrott and Sydney P Peterson. Uh, you've had a chance to play with Sydney, but just knowing that you're able to go down there with some familiar faces and being able to get to play with these players that you've had a chance to play against. I mean, how, how does that sound? How excited are you for that? I'm super excited. Uh, it definitely makes it more comforting. I know I've known Sid, great person off the ice. We get along awesome and, um, definitely not my favorite to play against, <laughs> which would be a compliment to her, but, um, yeah, I don't really know Ryan that well, but I'm excited to get to know her when we go down there. And I just think even traveling and everything will be definitely a lot easier. And you had a chance, you've had a chance to play against Ryan throughout your career here with the Swift current Wildcats. Just could you describe what it's like playing against a player of Ryan Parrott's caliber? Uh, you definitely have to keep your head up and like pay attention for her. I know Notre Dame's often a team that I don't know many players because they can kind of come from out of province and like Alberta. So I don't, I don't grow up playing against them, don't know them too well, but you definitely know when Ryan's on the ice and she makes an impact. And so even I tell young kids, hey, like, we got to make sure, like, she's got a very nice set of hands, especially, so don't let her fool you. Like, stay on the body and you got to look out for her. Moving back into just Robert Morris University, just the, the coaches that you're going to be able to have a chance to play under throughout your career there at Robert Morris, I'm assuming, like, for you to make a decision like this, you've had some pretty good conversations with the coaches before signing that commitment. Have you been able to stay in contact with them since then? Uh, I'm assuming that you have. Yeah, um, Jen, the assistant coach, um, she we have her phone calls like about every month or so and just kind of catch up and spend some time talking with her. But when I went down there, the coaches were great, so I couldn't ask for anything better. And how excited are you to be able to learn from these coaches throughout the years, learn the systems that they're going to be showing you guys and you guys having to go out and to execute them? How excited are you to just learn from these coaches in general? Uh, definitely excited. Uh, I've been playing with Terry for four years now, so he's a great coach and definitely sets you up well for university, but it'll be nice to get refreshing new look at things and maybe learn some different parts of the game. 
And just in terms of the university lifestyle, what's the one thing that you're most excited for when you take on this journey? Um, definitely like just being on your own, having more responsibility and um, getting away and hopefully experiencing some fun times. And what are you going to be studying at Robert Morris? Have you been able to put that and set that in stone yet? Or is it still up in the air for you? I'm actually planning on taking nursing. So I'm waiting to write my SAT due to COVID. It keeps getting canceled. Well, at least you got some more time to study, get uh, prepared to give the best test that you can. Uh, real quick before we go to the break, you've been able to improve every year, everywhere you've played. Of course, you had two 20-point seasons in your first years with the Swift Current Wildcats. And then last year, you ended up putting up 40 one points in 30 games last year, but just talking about getting to that next step of that university level, you've talked about how, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was in the article where you said that strength is going to be a big emphasis for you and also just improving your shot. And I'm sure that you're still continuing to work on these things, especially with the time you've had now, I'm sure that you've been able to work on your strength and your shot, especially being able to get on the pond. But what are the things that you feel like you're going to have to improve on now, looking at where you are at your career at getting, when you get to that next step of playing at university hockey? Well, I definitely need to get stronger. I'm not the biggest player out there. So um, use my speed and use my abilities. Always working on the shot, right? Uh, you're going to be starting from the bottom again. And hopefully by the time I get up to grade 12, I can be as confident as I am now. But hopefully I can play my game to the best of my ability. And you say you're excited to be able to show your talents out there and work your way up until the lineup when you do get to Robert Morris. Yeah, hopefully it's going to be different. I know that's the biggest thing is you're not guaranteed to play every night, so you have to practice like you want to be in the lineup. Graham Forsyth back here on the network. You just heard from our lovely sponsor, Pierre Inata, one of our official sponsors of everything female hockey here on the network. I've been joined by Bailey Kerwin in today's episode up until this point, and we're going to keep talking to Bailey. Well, I'm going to keep talking to Bailey about just hockey in general, just her, her career actually, and just where she's played. And Bailey, you're from Gold Lake, Saskatchewan originally. Um, what was it like moving away from Gold Lake to continue playing hockey in uh, Swift Current? Um, it was definitely nerve-wracking at first. Uh, when I played midget AA, I was still living at home, so I was driving every day, and I kind of met some girls. So then the transition to midget AAA and living in Swift, knowing some people in Swift was definitely a lot easier. And then I lived with my sister Taylor my first year. She was in grade 12 while I was in grade nine. And before that, my oldest sister Kayla was living here. So it was definitely a lot easier than most have it. And why did you decide to make that switch to playing in Swift Current? Was it because you had family there already? Or was it just kind of a personal decision for you to know that this might be the best place for you to continue your development? Uh, it was just the next step from my hockey career, the chance. I played, I never really played Bantam. I played Midget AA in the sec first year Bantam and then Midget AAA in second year Bantam. And 
the lake had just kind of that's all it would that's all it would take me was up until then and so this was the next place for me to go yeah and for you to be able to take that next step to not even playing at the the bantam level at all but playing at the midget double a level and then like you said in the midget triple a level as a young player i mean just what do you think that says about your game and how you're able to make that next step so easily and play against these players that are much older than you and still have some success? Uh, I would just say I'm pretty coachable and like I just kind of do what I like I'm told and I got the opportunity to play with some really good players and I but I say it's been a learning experience and they have definitely contribute to that and I've grown over the years, so hopefully I can keep it up with this next jump. Moving into some of the tournaments you've played in, you played at the North American Hockey Classic. That's the first tournament we're going to be taking a look into in the, the tournaments that you've played in in your uh, hockey career, just to name a few. But the North American Hockey Classic, you played in it. You played for the Saskatchewan Big Guns in the U14 Elite <sighs> female division level and take me back to that year in 2017 where you guys went on that finals run and came up just short holy that was a long time ago um looking back at it now some of the players i remember watching and they're like hey you gotta look out for her and um i actually ended up playing against some of the players at nationals last year on team bc so it's kind of cool to see like where they've gone and being able to play with them longer and not actually knowing them, but uh, it was definitely heartbreaking. I actually never got to go to the tournament in 2018. So I got had to miss out on the championship. I had an incident like a week before, which was really devastating. But looking back, um, I really wish I could have went. Yeah, you not being able to go in, in 2018 due to something happening just – very shortly prior to the tournament just how did you handle that mentally and just you know dealing with that situation um it was I don't know it was just a spring hockey tournament I guess I was pretty upset not being on the ice like after the season being ended and then you kind of get to go in June it's kind of exciting but um it didn't affect me too much, I guess. It would have been good to play with some new girls, though. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And just in general, um, being able to travel with a team like in spring hockey, definitely a lot different than playing with a normal club team. Just what were your takeaways from playing that, that spring hockey level from those years that you did play there? Uh, spring hockey was really fun our team i actually played on the 04 girl and we just kind of played up with some threes and it was some of the my bestest friends are made from there and like i play with lots of girls now who have come to swift and like i've known through spring hockey my coach like still keep in contact and um they're just relationships that you keep with you and memories and you also had a chance to play in um, the, the National Women's U18 Championships in 2019. Uh, you were playing with the Wildcats then, but being able to represent your province at a tournament like that and make you played for Team Saskatchewan, of course, but making a, a team like this, just what went through your mind when you got the I don't know if you got a call or you got called into the room but just getting that uh that notice that you were selected to play on this team with some of the best talent in Saskatchewan at the time yeah I was actually working in the sheep barn and I remember making that was top 29 and then I was just like oh like this is exciting it's only a couple more cuts and then the following August, uh, we had another camp. And I don't know, I was feeling pretty confident. I had some good fitness testing and um, just good relationships. You know all the girls there. 
and uh, like the week later, I remember my dad actually was the one who came in and told me, and it was just pretty exciting. Both my sisters have gone through it, and just being able to follow in their footsteps. And what was that like, being able to play with, like I said, some of the best talent from around Saskatchewan at the time? Uh, the tournament was unbelievable. Um, I'm definitely devastated that we didn't get to play this year up in um, Dawson Creek, but the game was just a lot faster and the girls, we had a great team. Everyone got along and it was really fun. Honestly, playing at the next level was super like learning. Like it was a lesson learned that this is where this is kind of a step in the right direction. And of course, the the answer for you to this question, I'm assuming is going to be devastation when you guys weren't able to capture the gold medal. I forget who did you guys play in the finals in that year? Uh, we played Ontario Red, which have they've won it like every year. <laughs> yeah, Ontario has been pretty dominant at those tournaments for sure for sure but yeah just the experience of representing your province making it all the way to the finals against a team like ontario red who like you said and it's been documented that they've absolutely dominated at this tournament in terms of winning championships but just what was the journey like being able to make it that far all the way up to you know close to the finish line, not quite making it over that finish line of getting that gold, but still making it to the finals in that tournament, what that journey was like. Um, it was super exciting. I did not expect that, honestly. We just kept winning and we won in a shootout. We won like our team dress stuck together and we played like a team and it showed and Saskatchewan has never won a medal. So winning the semifinal game was almost like a bigger achievement because we were guaranteed a medal and that was just like a history moment for Team Sask and it definitely gave us some uh, excitement to go into that gold medal. It would have been nice to win, but uh, we couldn't be happier with how we t finished and we we're hoping to build off that for next year, but it is what it is. Yeah. and. That word history, just knowing that you were able to be a part of something that's historic in women's Saskatchewan hockey, I mean, just uh, must feel pretty spectacular to know that you were a part of something like that. Yeah, it feels good to say and mm, definitely good because neither of my sisters can say that they did. That's just kind of a joke in our family when they try to chirp me, as my dad would say. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a pretty cool experience. Yeah, and definitely something you'll always be able to brag about, just little sister getting a, a leg up on uh, the, the bigger sisters in the Kerwin family, for sure. That's awesome. And uh, just talk about the, the type of role that you played on that team where you put into more of a, a role where you were allowed to be the offensive player? Did you play more of a defensive all around shutdown role in that tournament? Uh, I actually played on the line with Nina Brick and Lauren Folk. And I'd say we were pretty offensive that weekend. I didn't manage to put a puck in the net, but I had plenty of assists. Uh, I would say I had a big role in the penalty kill. Our team Sask had like one of the best penalty kills on that tournament. and. I learned a lot that week with our coach. Um, she spent a lot of time working with us and it was definitely, I've always played a penalty kill role, but learning from her and being at a focus and being a go-to player on that definitely felt special. And obviously the offensive role playing with Brick was a neat experience also. Yeah, and you've had the experience to play, like I've uh, mentioned with Sydney. You've mentioned, and we've mentioned in this interview, Sydney Peterson, uh, like you just mentioned, Nina Brick, uh, Tavia Terry back with uh, in the North American Hockey Classic, uh, Alexis Petford, just being able to play with just those names to name a few and just some other great players too. How has that really helped you really develop parts of your game? Uh 
well, playing with better players makes you better overall. And so I've been just like on it, like felt awesome to play with them and uh, playing against them also is fun. You definitely get to go on one-on-one battles and you chirp each other, but like knowing them off the ice, it's all fun. Like it's all just fun and games and you definitely build relationships playing with different teams and that's what makes it fun. And you also had a chance to play in front of some people from Robert Morris University in that tournament, correct? They came down to watch you? Yeah, and then they got in contact with me after that. So just being able to play in front of, I mean, people that are evaluating you and just uh, crowds like that in those tournaments, for some players, I feel like they'd say there's you know, a lot of pressure involved in that. I'm sure there was, like you said, uh, it was nerve wracking planning that tournament, but it it seems like you've been able to thrive under the pressure throughout your career. Just, is it something that comes with just learning to block out the noise or is it just you just being able to play your game out there and rising above that? Um, Yeah, it definitely was nerve wracking. You'd walk through the hallways and it would just be scouts everywhere and, Definitely the final game was on TSN. There was cameras and you just knew that people back home were watching. And so I think part of that was I liked the energy in the building and the crowd was unreal. Like um, we were the underdogs. So I would say like the fans were kind of on our side. And uh, I don't know, I like having like a barn almost where the fans are like, I find I thrive when the atmosphere is good. Yeah, pretty electric. Uh, TSN broadcast in the game so you know it's you're you're in the the what's the word the the big spotlight now uh back then as uh I guess the saying goes I don't know but you're in the big spotlight and for you to be able to perform especially on that line a, a great experience for sure for you to learn throughout that tournament and um yeah, we're, we're just going to move into your time playing with the Swift Current Broncos back in 2016-17. Just you had a chance to play on that team. You guys ended up coming fifth in the regular season, and you were able to lead your team in points with uh, 39 points in that season. Of course, 29 goals, 10 assists, 39 points, only four penalty minutes in only 28 games played. So you're over a goal per game, which is so impressive, the consistency that you've shown. Just how were you able to find that consistency in that season? Um, well, I came in with Sarah Kendall, who I'd actually played with like three or four years prior to moving, like to coming to SWIP. And so just knowing like she's my line mate and we play well together, we definitely felt comfort. And it was a little nerve wracking at first, right? I was 12 years old when I made the team playing with girls who are like in grade 12 and definitely, but as the season went on, I built my confidence and it definitely was a good year. I can't complain. I can still picture the whole playoff run, right? We ended fifth, though we ended up winning the league, which was kind of some upsets in there and big games and we won at home. And that's honestly like the only league title I've ever won. And I can still replay every part of it in my head. And it was just an unbelievable year. Yeah. And being able to win the league in that year, even though you guys weren't the best team in the league, you guys definitely had a solid season winning 14 games. And yeah, the talent you played with, of course, playing with uh, Sarah Kendall, a player that you ended up playing with, with the uh, Swift Current Wildcats, which was pretty special to be able to, you know, play with her throughout those years. I'm sure we're going to get into that in just a bit. But, um, yeah, just being able to really improve against way older talent than you, uh, for you being a player that, you know, for your age would usually be playing Bantam, but you decided to continue playing your career at that midget level at such an early age. What were the adjustments that you found you needed to make throughout your uh, years there with Swift current the Broncos? Um, just get stronger, bigger, uh, get more confident. I definitely was scared at first. And then by the end, I had 
by the end of the season, I felt confident and just like one of the girls on the team. Like I didn't look at myself as the younger player anymore. And like definitely it was more of a family, which was easier to like adjust to. And yeah, there was a bunch of us young girls. So it was lots of fun. And like you said, you guys ended up winning the league. Was that, did you guys have provincials or was it just considered a league championship? Well, when we played, there was actually, you had to go in provincials and the league. So we were kind of playing a provincial little thing on top of our like playoffs. And we actually lost out to Weyburn, I believe, and which was below us. So that was kind of an upset, but I guess that gave us um, some energy to prove them wrong in the uh, league final. Yeah. And like you said, that was an upset um, in that, uh, in the time that they beat you. And you said that there were some upsets along the way to you guys winning that championship. And for you, you were able to continue the success that you had on the scoreboard in the regular season. And that translated in the playoffs where you had seven goals, six assists, 13 points in um, eight games played in those playoffs. Just what do you think it was that really allowed you to continue that success in the playoffs? Um, I would just say building off one game, like, from one to the next, like, we would just win. And then it was like, well, we actually have a shot. Let's win again. And uh, we went to game three. We had never had home ice advantage. We were winning on the road. And I don't know, it was just a hard fought battle, which I think almost gave us momentum. Those upsets were just like really entertaining games. No one expected it. Yeah. And you had a chance to move to play with the Swift Current Wildcats at the U18 level. And you were, you know, you, you learned a lot, it seems like, from playing at that uh midget level the year prior and just the midget levels in general before getting to the Wildcats team just what were the the biggest takeaways from playing with the Broncos I'd say it gave me confidence to play with new players because growing up you play in a small town you play with the same uh players every other year right you're going with different age groups but you know everyone and you know the coaches and that was the biggest thing with me leaving I didn't want to leave my friends. I'd grown up with them and I knew that like I wouldn't get to play with them again. But I'd say going to Swift and Midget AA definitely made it easier to adjust to Midget AAA in a way that I was learning from new coaches and having to play with new players. Graham Forsyth back here on the network with Bailey Kerwin, number 16 of the Swift Current Wildcats. She's a fourth year forward on this team this year to get into just going back to the, the start of her playing time there back in 2017-18. And you came in with some valuable experience playing at that midget level years prior of course playing with the swift current broncos and you had a chance to to make that uh transition to playing with the swift current wildcats and the sfm triple a hl and you had a chance to play under your dad that season you're still playing under him and uh w did you have a chance to be coached by him before getting to play there uh one year when I was really little but other than that I've never been coached by my dad until uh, Midget Triple A so it's definitely something new uh, we don't really actually communicate much when we're like on the bench I do most of the talking with Terry that's just how it's always been but he definitely just treats me like one of the players sweet and it's always nice I feel like because you don't want to like your, the coach's daughter or the coach's son, there's always kind of that uh, 
that stereotype there that, you know, maybe you could get away with some stuff, but it's definitely great to hear that you and your dad keep it pretty, I guess, professional on the ice. And even though there's not a lot of words said between you guys out there, you, like you said, you talk more to your head coach and Terry, it's nice to know that he's been a, a good head coach for you. And um, just, yeah, what was it like getting to play under Terry in that first year and just throughout your whole career up until this point? Uh, I have nothing but good things to say about Terry. He definitely puts his time in and like he has no kids playing hockey and he's just a guy in the community who spends most of his life at the rink and hanging out with us girls. I know he loves it. And um, it was an adjustment, right? I was a new coach. I hadn't been coached by him before, but my sisters have been in the program. And so it was kind of easy for me because I've known Terry. I kind of, by then was comfortable with him because I've talked to him and different things. He's pretty easygoing guy, really easy to get to know. You'll definitely see that if you hang around our team um we joke around a lot probably too much but uh now going into year four it's crazy it's been this long uh I can't thank him enough for what he's done to me and I've seen him do for other girls he's just always willing to like put himself out there and doing what's best for the team and what was it like stepping in and playing in the systems that Terry has put out there for you guys to learn the types of systems you guys play on the ice. Just talk about the the type of system that he runs and how it really suits your game. Um, well, he's really good at keeping up with the times. Like, he always, like, adjusts everything and, like, we'll be playing, say, Battleford, and he'll watch video and he's like, okay, we're going to do this. and um, you get to learn over the time. There's definitely the same things. Uh, me and my goalie, Amaya, we joke because she she could tell the regroup um, just as good as any one of the forwards because she's been there for four years and she watches on the board. And it's just funny because we chirp Terry like, hey, we've done this for four years. It's in the back of our minds now. But he is very much a teacher. He likes to lay write everything out and he's very good at explaining things. So any questions and uh, easy to learn from and uh, just really um, expects the best and is hard on you, but definitely takes his time and has some patience. And in your rookie season, you put up 20 points in that year um, in 20 um eight games played you were a discipline player as well with only four penalty minutes and it seems like you've been a disciplined player throughout your whole hockey playing time in your lifetime so why do you think you've been able to stay so disciplined throughout these years there's going to be times out there where you know there's going to be some unlucky breaks and you get those unlucky bounces and taking a penalty but it seems like that hasn't really been the case with you uh, yeah, I guess I've never really been that type of player. I'm pretty laid back and I mostly get angry at myself, but I'm a penalty killer. I always have been. It's probably my favorite part of the game. So I feel like if I take a penalty, it's like letting the team down because I'm supposed to be the one killing the penalty. And I've learned a lot over the years about um, that part of the game. And it's probably almost as exciting as um offense for me and being able to put up 20 points on that rookie season and 28 games played playing in a new environment of course you had some experience playing against that older competition years prior in this team but for you in that first season of course you said you love playing on the pk did you have a chance to play on that pk in that first year uh, yeah, I can actually remember uh, uh, both my sister and Taylor Lind, who were like our probably our top two players at that time, were both out in the game. And those are some pretty key players. And I just remember it was going, it was a five on three. We we're running into penalty issues. We were short on the bench and 
I got thrown out there and just from paying attention at practice and stuff. And I ended up scoring like two shorthanded goals, which was really exciting. But I can still remember that was the first time that I got a chance to play penalty kill. And then after that, it's kind of been my role in a way. And always adjustments along the way, no matter you play throughout a year. Um, what did you find the biggest adjustments were for yourself personally in that first year and just looking back at it after you guys finished the season? Um, definitely moving away from home and being on my own, even with my sister. Uh, but it was more just doing the right thing, right? You do the right thing on and off the ice and just doing what I was told and then just learning, taking everything in um ma like making the best of everything uh just doing what i can to improve my game and just controlling myself and you had a chance to experience playoff hockey that season once again uh you had a chance to put up a goal and an assist um in those four games that you played but what was it for yourself experiencing playoff hockey at this level for the first time uh, it was very exciting. Uh, I've never really been in a long playoff run, I guess, midget double A. And it was definitely devastating last year when we were a veteran team and supposed to go far. But yeah, it was an experience to have when I was younger to learn from the other kids. And I was hoping that I would be able to almost like give that to like, the rookies now which hopefully we get a season I'm just praying uh, I've never been the oldest on a female hockey team ever in my life so this has kind of been devastating but uh, learning as a rookie was definitely an everyday thing and hopefully I've been able to pass some things down to the rookies this year and you had a chance to play with your sister Taylor in that season and always nice being able to always cool being able to play with a sibling for sure of course you playing with one of your sisters must have been one of the cool things but yeah just taking a look back at that experience of being able to play with her is that something that you guys still talk about being able to play with her in that season and, you know, for you playing with her in that season and your rookie season. Um, we don't talk about it too much, uh, but it was more of just the adjustment and having her with me and just having someone else like to look at, like was on my back on my side the whole time and it made it easier. And she just showed me the ropes and I guess, that's something I took for granted and I'm following in her footsteps in a way, but it was my first time ever playing with her. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. And yeah, it must have been so cool being able to uh, play, play with one of your siblings for sure. One of your sisters just moving into your second season, you have a year under your belt in the league. You put up 20 points again, so you didn't, improve in that aspect but were there other things in your game that you found that you did in other than on the score sheet that you know a place where you didn't boost your production um i would just say well that was definitely not like my best year looking back on stats but um i definitely learned a lot right i was on my own i guess and uh i actually played a lot with taylor lynn that year and She's obviously a very good player, lots of respect for her. And it was a very fun year, I guess. I definitely still learned lots. I was still growing. I was still getting bigger, stronger, and still getting my confidence up to where I am now. And you were able to, even though you didn't put up the amount of points that you did last year you didn't really take that next step on the scoreboard in the regular season talking about the score sheet but um you won games in the playoffs that year you guys made it farther than you guys did in the year before and you were able to put up five points in those seven games so just for you to be able to contribute on the score sheet 
like you did not an insane amount of points but a solid amount of points just under two points from being a point per game player in the playoffs what you find was working so well in your game in those playoffs for you to be able to put up the little amount of points that you did with those five points um it was definitely exciting uh big games big moments i can actually still I still remember the time we lost out. It wasn't even a nice goal. It was a miscommunication from our D-man and our goalie. But my family said you could hear a pin drop in the rink. Everyone was just devastated. It was in double overtime. Everyone was exhausted. We were trying to get food in us. But um, points. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like some games you have a touch and it just goes your way and you're on fire. I, I love crowds. I just think playoff hockey is so exciting and it just makes you your game go to a whole ne- new level. And moving into your next season, uh, which was last year, you had a career year. You ended up putting up 41 points in 30s play. You had 29 goals, 12 assists. And just looking back at those first two years of playing in that league, were there things that you really focused your game heading into that season? Of course, you've talked about the strength and how you always, it seems like you're a player that's always looking to improve your shot. And that's definitely one of the biggest things that probably went into it was you improving your shot and being able to score that amount of goals. But was there a particular focus in general heading into that season from your off season last year? Uh, well, I definitely felt the pressure. Uh, I was told that I had to, well, we lost a one of our top scorers. So it was like trying when they're scouting, I spent hours talking to my dad about the team and how it's going to go. But uh, when they're scouting, it's trying to fill in those gaps, right? They try to fill who's going to take Taylor's spot, who I need to fill this spot. And so it was definitely the pressure going in that I needed to put up points. And I guess it succeeded. I definitely got a lot more confident in my game. And the ball just kept rolling my way. And we... I played with Sarah Kendall, Brooklyn Rubley. Can't say enough about those two. We had fantastic line. We had fun every game. Like there was always smiles on our faces. Like it just made the game a lot more fun when you're scoring and putting up points. But it was a devastating end to the year. Yeah, and we'll get into that in uh, a few moments here. Uh, Just going to continue talking about the roster that you guys had. And like you said, you had to fill the shoes of a a Taylor Lance season, but you guys had such a a promising stack team, I'd say, from the very beginning. Of course, you guys had so many veteran players. Uh, In terms of seniors, you had 18, three grade 11s, and one grade 10, 12 returning players in total, and you had new additions. But – you know, you had some experiences, some experience in those new additions, like a uh, second year player coming into the system and a third year senior and four rookies in general. But yeah, you guys just talking about the talent that you had, two things that stood out to me was you guys had three players. You were included in that and in the top 10 in point production in the league. And you also had uh, the Brittany Chartier, top goalie, the winner in Amaya Girodier. And um, Amaya is someone that you've played with throughout a long time in your hockey career. She's playing with you this year. Just speaking about Amaya, first off, just what's impressed you about just the way she's been able to grow throughout the years that you've been playing with her? Well, I've played with her since spring hockey, since we were little, and then we played midget double A together, and she was definitely a big part to that winning season. Like, we had a good goalie in net, and um, then watching her grow throughout the years, she was probably, like, almost our starter by grade nine of, like, Christmas of her grade nine season, which is, like, pretty amazing, and then... um, Watching her develop, I mean, we go at it every day in practice, and she can read me like a book. There's no doubt about that. We've played together so long, and 
I don't know. It's fun. When you score on her, it's definitely competitive, right? You know you deserve that goal because she was giving it her all. And, like, we just trip each other and we only make each other better. And I'm excited, like, to get one last year with her. And you played on a line last season with Sarah Kendall and uh, Brooklyn Root. And just being able to play with those caliber of players, uh, you've known Sarah for a very long time up to that point. And, of course, uh, Brooklyn was a senior senior on the team. And, of course, you had the individual success, but you guys playing on a line together, you guys were rolling uh, one of the top time, uh, top lines in the league, the looks of it, just the way you guys were able to put up the points. But just could you talk about what made you guys so strong as a line? Was it just the skill sets that you guys bring and just the way you look, come all together? Was it just the, the chemistry that you guys had as well or just all those things put into one? It's definitely a combination of them all. I mean, me and Sarah Kendall obviously had some chemistry. We've been playing together since we were, like, little. But <laughs> Sorry, my <laughs> brother just got home and scared me. Um, it's all good. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> uh, we're playing with two seniors too, right? You, It makes a huge difference, like, from grade nine to grade 12, how much a person can grow and you just get, you watch, like, you wouldn't think they're going to be an all-star. You watch them develop and they're just so strong so much. Like other teams just don't stand a chance put up against that. And your game took a huge jump last year, of course, putting up the 29 goals, 12 assists, 41 to 30 games. And you put up most of those points, as a goal scorer, uh, just can you talk about what makes you so dangerous as a goal scorer? Um, actually, yeah, just what makes you so dangerous as a goal scorer? Um, I would just say, hmm, I wouldn't say I have the best shot, honestly, in my opinion, but. I just think my hockey IQ is pretty high and I just find that spots where I'm needed and I use my speed where it's necessary. And I just, it kind of all falls into place. Honestly, I, I'd rather have a breakaway where I'm getting hauled down than full on like a penalty shot. I just, I sometimes get my own head, but in the moment I just can pull off something that I would never expect myself to do. And yeah, I stopped myself asking uh, a double question, but I was going to ask you, um, what is your favorite spot to score from on the ice? Is there a certain spot that you have that's your favorite place to be in? Um, I find a lot of my goals come from beating a defenseman wide. I know that's not really a spot, but that's kind of just how I you go to you drive to the far post. You got to get it to the net, and that's where you create scoring opportunities. Yeah, and like you said, in your opinion, you don't think you have a shot, and for sure, you use your advantages like your speed to burn by the defenseman. Uh, you know, you're always in the right position, so I'm sure that there's a lot of rebound goals that you've scored, but you always seem like you're putting yourself in the right spots for sure. And that's one of the things that from this interview so far uh, in this last little while stands out to me and your uh, last answers is just your ability to be in those right places, to put in yourself in those successful positions. And just for you as a penalty killer, I'm sure you played so much on the PK last year. How have you found that you've developed as a PK player? Um, I've got more confident. Uh, I've always been pretty confident in the like, offensive zone. I can take the puck, but the part of the penalty kill is blocking shots. And I definitely think I've got a lot better at that and being able to uh, outwork the D men in the other end, almost getting like some scoring opportunities or being able to bring the puck back, like having the confidence to skate it around and to bring it back to the, our end almost to ice it down to waste time. It's definitely just grown and um, hopefully 
I'll get to play some more and keep working on it. Yeah, and PK, of course, being able to be on there means you're pretty responsible in your defensive zone and, of course, being able to uh, execute the coverages in the defensive zone. Would you say being able to play on the PK like you have been throughout your time here with the Wildcats has made you that much better of a defensive player? I would say so, yeah. Um, it gives you more of a responsibility and um, it definitely makes you have to trust your ability and trust your gut and um, understand the defensive area a lot better. And of course, last year at breaking, you guys finishing second in the league, you guys had such a team full of experienced players that came back, of course, 12 returning players, as mentioned before in this interview. But yeah, you guys weren't able to have a chance to finish it off. And I, I feel like I already know the answer to this question, so I'm not going to ask it, but I'm just going to say that I'm sure it's going to be devastating for you guys knowing that you have to, for the players that were returning for this year and for the players that were were leaving and graduating out of the program, it was heartbreaking because you weren't able to get it done one last time with that group of players. But just one player in particular, like you said, that you played for so long with is Sarah Kendall. And just what was it like having to, you know, say goodbye to her and know that you were never going to be able to play on the same team as her again at that point? Oh, yeah, that definitely hit hard, um, especially with COVID and everything. Um, part of being a team is the off-ice stuff and going to each other's grads. So, like, we had so many grads, and then we got together as a team one last night, and then after that, it was COVID. You don't see them. I don't know if I've seen Sarah since then, and... It's definitely an experience that you, like, would remember. And I guess we never got the opportunity um, to experience that. But she, I think, likes it in Saskatoon. And hopefully she'll get a season two to be able to play there. But they have canceled the, that season. Yeah, yeah. And, uh yeah, just moving on to how you want one of the, I guess, bright spots in your season besides putting up the year that you did have and the team success. But for you individually, you end up winning the uh, most sportsmanlike player award in the league. And we've just talked about it in this interview, how you're a, a player that, you know, doesn't really put yourself in those spots to take those penalties. It's, kind of what I gathered from what you told me, but just for you to be rewarded with something like this at the end of the season, just how did that feel? Uh, it felt pretty good. I guess it just, um, like, I think of myself as pretty sportsmanlike, and I guess that they obviously noticed that, and it just feels good to be re rewarded. And this year and there's some new faces on the team this year of course you got nine returning players and you also got nine additions as well three seniors on this team and you're one of them but how has it been like this year just being able to bump the teammates like the rookies and the new additions that you guys got coming in this year um it's been good i'm actually wearing the c but um so it's been a lot more responsibility and trying to keep the rookies um, going, right? They're kind of that loss of motivation right now. The I have a rookie living with me and um, just seeing things from their perspective is kind of different too. And um, trying to keep the team together and motivated. We have a great group of girls and I couldn't have asked for a better team. It's just been a tough year. And could you speak about the talent you have on this year's team? You got great upfront, of course, additions like Callie Arnold and Ava Metzger has been huge for you guys. Um, of course, 
looking at it on the back end, the defenseman like Cameron Johnson has stopped this year, one of your guys' seniors, and she's put up four points in five games. And sure, you guys haven't had the greatest start to the season for the type of team that you guys have, but just the, the talent's there for sure. Could you speak about that talent you guys got this year throughout the lineup? Um, it's definitely crazy to see as much as we lost last year. Uh, it feels good to kind of know that we're in the mix again. We have Amaya again for the fourth season on the back ends. So we couldn't have asked for a more stable goaltender. And our defense are young, and but they'll get there. But Cameron has done a great job leading back there, and her and Jessica Buffard were running the assistance. They definitely have stepped it up and hopefully can keep stepping up to improve their game back there. And up front, Ava, who I've played with, Callie I've played with coming in have been great additions, obviously. Um, it felt good to get some older bodies, right? We only had three grade 12s going into this year um like I said the age does matter you definitely get better and it just makes a huge difference but our rookies have been good too we have uh well Sadie Keller and Jersey Wattain who have stepped up into a role that they probably didn't expect right away and they've done good like have had good starts and we couldn't have asked for anything better from them but the other rookies like they it's been a tough year and I guess everyone's kind of accepted it and hopefully we can go somewhere with it. Yeah. And not only a tough year, tough start, I guess, for the, the team that you guys do have with the talent you guys have, of course, you guys lost uh, some key pieces from last year, but this team has a lot of talent on paper and you guys could probably be better than you guys are on the, the, the standings right now. But it's it's all about figuring it out. And it seems like you guys started to figure out your game in that game against the Notre Dame Hounds for you specifically uh, in that last game before the season went on pause. And for you so far this season, of course, you played those two exhibition games and you put up four points in two of those games. And one regular season hit, you weren't having a uh, – a great start to the season production wise, but there was a lot of unlucky bats there. And it seems like you started to figure it out in that last game before the season went on pause against the Notre Dame hounds, when you put up two goals and one assist and you guys dealt with, uh, dealt with some absences in that time too. You guys were down three players and for you to come out and finally, get the, the ball rolling for you in this season. How much did that do for your confidence? Uh, definitely was a good way to go on pause, I guess. Uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of factors going into this new team. New year. We didn't get those exhibition games like usual. We didn't get to get used to each other. And uh, definitely thankful that by the end we did. Even our coaches said that game against Notre Dame was – one of our best and it can only go out from there. So um, hopefully we'll get the start and be able to build off that game in a way. And hopefully I can continue to build off that game. Had a little bit of a tough start, not what I wanted, but can only go out from there. Definitely some things to work on for you guys. Just looking at it, of uh, stats and stuff. I haven't really had a chance to watch many games or any games at all from you guys this year, but uh, things that seem like they need to be worked on is just the discipline of the team in general with staying more disciplined out there, not taking penalties and maybe they're in the defensive zone. Would I be wrong in that aspect or there, you know, maybe those are the things that you do need to work on as a team heading into the, uh latter half season the, the later parts of the season uh no you're definitely right we have some rookies on the defensive end and uh it's a whole nother level so we play man on man and it's all just coming into play right they're having to stay on their man it's just a different speed and uh we had some kind of rookie centermen they were testing out and um Definitely our defensive end could use some work and our discipline always 
I find we're always in the box, no matter what season I've been on. Uh, but gotta love the PK. And um, we definitely spent a lot of time at practice working on our defensive zone after that first game where Terry noticed it. And that's the first thing he did. Like he even said, I take responsibility. Like he's a great coach. He, so we struggled and we worked on it. Like um, we haven't got the chance to lately. We can only have eight people on the ice, but hopefully we can get start some full um, team practices here soon. Yeah. And of course there's, there's always going to be things that aren't going to be perfect, especially in the early parts of the season. And it just, it's so unfortunate that you guys, along with all the other teams in the league, haven't been able to on what's been showcased out there already this season. But for sure, when you got a younger decor, when you are undisciplined and when the, these players coming in are earning a, to play, like you said, that man-on-man -man game, there's definitely going to be some growing pains for sure, especially for these new rookies coming in. Just before I let you go here and before to our final commercial break of the show, this time has been tough on everybody in the world, just with all the restrictions that are being set here in uh, Canada. I know here in Manitoba, we're still in code red. Uh, hopefully that Things are going to change very soon, but who knows? But I know in Saskatchewan, they shut down sports. Um, they, they shut down the league, at least, uh, from what I've heard. And just, it, it must be tough mentally, but how have you dealt with the, just the break from a mental aspect of things? Um, definitely just looking on the positive and like, what I've learned throughout this whole COVID situation. Uh, no one can tell you what to do. No one's lived through this. No one's had anything like this. So just going day by day and make keeping on top of my um, schoolwork and um, going to the gym and doing skills, that's all you can really do right now. Welcome back to Coffee with Graham. This was our first edition of the show for 2021. It was a lot of fun getting back into the uh, swing of things here. It was lots of fun talking to Bailey Kerwin. Thanks to her for coming on today's edition of the show. Special thanks to the sponsors of today's episode, Piranata, Fabricland, Winkler, and Toby Hockey. And a special thanks to you, the viewer, and all the viewers for tuning in to today's edition of Coffee with Graham. My next edition of the show comes out on Thursday at 10.30 a.m. It's the return of MFHL season coverage, the first edition of that series for 2021 coming up on thursday on amateur sports tv on facebook and youtube or you can simply visit our website at amateursports.tv to catch the action also if you guys want to stay up to date with when coffee with graham episodes come out and when all the other episodes of our other shows come out here on the network be sure to follow us on facebook for that follow us on twitter at amateur sports tv and also on instagram at amateur sports tv to stay up to date with when our new episodes are coming out i've been your host of coffee with graham graham Forsyth, signing off on this tuesday morning have a good one folks enjoy the rest of your day stay safe out there and until thursday i'll see you later